I still can't explain it. I'm an astronaut, and I encountered a magnetic storm during my mission to end up here, in a world where the Earth is cubic. There is no atmosphere, and it's like being on the moon. There are huge slopes that you would slide down if you are not careful. Then I found myself in an area with an atmosphere. In order to look for life, I headed for the center of the cubic Earth. But what I came across was a lifeless, high-temperature, high-pressure world beyond my wildest dreams. Perhaps human beings don't exist here. But just then, I received a report of an ocean on the next side of the planet. In search of a ray of hope, I headed for the side with the ocean. just received an observation report from our mothership above. We are now on the side of the cubic earth with the ocean. Seawater equivalent to the amount on the spherical earth has accumulated on this side. The ocean is in a convex lens shape due to gravity. It has a diameter of 3,400 kilometers. Its depth is 300 kilometers. That's incredibly deep. It's 30 times deeper than the Marianas Trench. Artificial land formations can be seen from the orbiting mothership. They could have been formed by the unique weather patterns on the cubic Earth. Right, let's descend and head for the ocean. We are now 1,800 kilometers away from the center of the side plane. The atmospheric pressure is 0.5 atmosphere. The climate is like that of alpine regions on Earth. This is what a plant looks like on cubic Earth. Look closely. It is shaped to collect moisture from the air. It probably does not rain. There's a similar place in South America. It's called Lomas de la Cai, and it rarely rains. Plants there, too, thrive on moisture in the air. The moist air from the sea spirals upward, fanned by a sea breeze during the day. It is like the cloud streets of the Sea of Japan in winter. The moisture turns into roll clouds, where the air spirals upward, and here it turns into fog. Lippo, I can see something over there looks artificial. Check it! There is interference and I cannot tell. Is it an intelligent life form? What? What's wrong? Nipple? Nice to meet you. It took me some time to understand your language. I am the network that controls this world. I am going to borrow Lippo for a while. You have lost your way, and we want to help you. Please carry on down the slope. You will see our farm. Wow, what a surprise. 
a civilization as advanced as this evolved on the cubic Earth too. I can see the cubic Earth ocean in the distance. But this farm is on a really steep slope. It's a belt that stretches out at a distance of about 60 kilometers from the coast. The angle of the slope is about 19 degrees. The temperature and air pressure are just right. So where are the people that live on this cubic earth? The air pressure is too low for us here. Life was born in the sea on this planet. Here, it is one atmosphere. By the sea, it is nine atmospheres, which is just right for us. So you're saying this is a fully automated, unattended farm? Can you see the jungle by the sea? Can you see those green balls rolling out of the jungle? Are they plants? They are plants that roll in the breeze. Big ones grow to 10 meters. The sea breeze blows them uphill, and when the breeze dies down at night, they roll downhill again. This happens every day, and that's how they grow. Those plants carry nutrients from the sea to this farm. They break down and fertilize the land. On the other hand, groundwater is used to water the farm. The moisture rising from the sea turns into fog and condenses on the ground. The condensed water seeps into the ground to become groundwater, which flows down the hill. That's the water that we pump out of the ground here. The sea is surrounded by steep hills. Crops are cultivated by utilizing the sea breeze and water. There is not much seasonal change here. Crops can be harvested throughout the year. The shadow on the ocean is expanding. The sun will go down soon. What a bright and beautiful sunset. Let's head for the ocean tomorrow morning. I will guide you to our floating city. We will head to our floating city on that ship. We are currently 1,700 kilometers from the center of this side plane. The temperature is 65 degrees Celsius. The atmospheric pressure is nine atmospheres. The air will feel thick to you. There is almost no wind. No wind? Then where did these waves come from? There is a huge storm way offshore. On this cubic Earth, there is no wind that can move the storm, so it stays in the same place. Storms stay in the same spot on this planet? Our city has been built near this storm. Do you harvest the energy from the storm? It's true that storms have a tremendous amount of energy. That's right. Well, let's make our way to the city. Oh, are we going to fly? Flying is a more efficient means of transport. 
The air pressure is high, so that's why a plane shaped like this can fly. Nine atmospheres by the sea. A thick, lens-shaped ocean. Can you see something flying over there? What a huge animal! The atmospheric pressure of nine atmospheres must make it easier for flying animals to evolve. The seashore is brimming with life. But there is not much life offshore. That is because there is a shortage of nutrients. Marine organisms die, and they are broken down to become nutrients for other organisms. But where the ocean is deep, they sink to the bottom and never return to the surface. That means life cannot survive offshore. Let's take a closer look at the deep ocean. The water pressure rises by one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth. The deepest part of the ocean is 300 kilometers deep. 10 meters times 30,000, so it's around 30,000 atmospheres. That's a terrible amount of pressure. At 30,000 atmospheres, water becomes ice at temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Life is set to exist even in such a deep ocean. We will be arriving at the floating city in around two more hours. The wind will grow stronger and denser as we approach the storm. Our city makes use of the abundant energy contained in the storm. Our city makes full use of wind and wave energy. The airships you see over there are fishing. The area around here is a rich fishing ground. Thanks to the storm, there is an upwelling and the sea is brimming with life. The wind from the storm churns the upper layers of the ocean, creating a rich fishing ground. A civilization that makes use of the power of the weather. It's truly wonderful. The hall is surrounded by water. People on the cubic earth live in the water and only come out to raise their children or make things. This room has been adjusted so that you will be comfortable. But the people of this planet will come to see you as they remain inside the comfort of the nine atmosphere ocean. Here they are. They are members of the city committee. They are cubicites, the people who live on this cubic earth. You, you are... Welcome to our earth. We developed into who we are today after eons of evolution. You have created an incredible civilization on the cubic earth, despite its harsh environment. How many of you are there? There is a total of 10 million of us on this planet. Is that all? That is the maximum number of intelligent life forms that can live on this cubic earth. Your earth is spherical. 
Our Earth is cubic. Our worlds are far apart, but we can travel between the planets. We will use the massive power of the storm to send you back to your world. Are you ready? It was a wonderful experience. Thank you. I'm truly grateful. You're welcome. imagined how different things would be just because the Earth was cubic. I have recorded everything that happened on the cubic Earth. This record will no doubt make human beings realize the subtlety of the balance in which our Earth is hanging. The spherical Earth. It's an irreplaceable planet that is brimming with life.